Okay, friends. Uh, today's class, we will just uh, try to understand what are the different methods of network research. And uh, while well, these are some of the uh, types of uh, research that we have here, uh, the first one is uh, the survey of experts. In the survey of experts, uh, we do deal with the uh, experts survey. Uh, Yes. Did I think? Was our fan, huh? mm. uh -huh. mm. okay. I'm a big survey of experts. Uh, in this case, we are uh, trying to, whenever we are doing an expert research, uh, we uh, try to gather the expert advice from the people who have achieved the expertise in that. For example, uh, we might, you know, uh, if you suppose, you know, we are interested to uh, do an expert research on how to do this in uh, China, then it's very important for anybody, for that matter, to approach somebody who is very expert in doing uh, business with Chinese government or even within the China. So, expert research survey of exports is that. Uh, apart from that, uh, well, uh, let's suppose you know if you want to do a research on certain things, uh, let's suppose you want to. Uh, Already experts in this uh, phone business, then probably you know, might do a survey of that, and then probably get to know uh, what sort of things that we can do uh, with respect to understanding the surveys. So what you do here, you basically go to the experts, and then you ask certain set of questions uh, about the new launch of the product that you are planning to, or else even about the pricing as well. I mean, you can just go and uh, approach the people, approach the people about the, what is the optimal price that you can charge for this particular product. So it's always about expert advice. Is that uh, expert uh, surveys will not give you a concrete results. They may give you a direction of uh, research. They may give you further. Uh, 
other things that you can explore. Uh, they may uh, also give you new insights, uh, but then probably the expert surveys will not give you a very conclusive result. Okay, so that is one uh, aspect. Second aspect of our exploratory research, uh, another method, the second method of doing exploratory research is doing pilot surveys. Pilot surveys are nothing but uh, you are doing a survey for a certain very small group of people, a very small group of people, and just to understand what could be the result of your research. Okay, what could be the possible results of your research? Just to understand that you uh, do a research. I mean, here you know you can do a survey for about 50 or 25 to 50 subjects, and then you know in this case you make them to read your questionnaire and see if they understand what you mean by asking that question. You know, you can ask them whether they are understanding the questionnaire or not. Is there any kind of a confusion? I mean, whatever the way, probably you might want to ask something, but they are, might be uh, understanding something other way. So this is what is pilot surveys. Pilot surveys are done to check if the questionnaire collects the desired data. If the questionnaire is a uh, question within the questionnaire, what are the questions that we have within the questionnaire? Do they intend to absorb what they really, uh, what they really meant for? Let's suppose, you know, do you like uh, Hero Honda in comparison to Suzuki? Uh, then, you know, you should get the correct information from them. So that is what is uh, pilot surveys are used for. So after the pilot surveys, you know, there, there some of the respondents may not understand your question, and then you know that you can do some changes within that uh, within those questions, so that you can make those questions more understandable. Okay, so uh, you can reduce the number of questions, or you can increase the questions. Uh, within the questionnaire, so that you know you can understand, you can understand what the customers are uh, thinking about, what the customers are uh, responding, how they're responding. So, you know so what sort of questions that you should ask, in what style you should ask, so that you can capture the right response. Okay, so you can even change the structure of the questionnaire. Instead of Likert kid, you can make it as a dichotomous, or you can change the language of the questionnaire. You can make it in a linguistic language, the regional language, uh, and things like that. See, these uh, questions, uh, questionnaires can be changed uh, in the pilot survey. In pilot survey, is also important. I mean, you will also understand how uh, you know uh, what should be, what will be the time taken for the surveys you conduct. How much time it has taken for you to collect information from, let's suppose, 50 respondents. If it has taken long, then you know you might rethink or uh, rethink on the process of selecting the subjects. Okay, so you can also kind of figure out here by doing pilot survey what sort of a, a subject that you should target to collect the response. Let's suppose you know you are doing a survey on engineering students. Okay, um, I mean, uh, what sort of an engineering student is suitable for your kind of a survey? So that is uh, that is what can be determined here in the in the case of pilot studies. So before being doing a bigger research, before doing a bigger research, you do a small research. Before doing a bigger research, where uh, you have to collect information from about five thousand to six thousand people, before you do that, you conduct the research for fifty people and try to understand whether you are going in the right direction or not. You can change the questions, you can change the subjects, you can change. Increase the questions, decrease the questions, or even instead of a Likert scale, you can make it as a dichotomous and things like that. Okay, so that is what pilot surveys are used for. So pilot surveys are used for checking whatever that you are planning to do, will it work out uh, in reality or not? So whatever that you are planning to do, get the to get the desired results. Uh, are you heading into the right direction or not? That's what the pilot surveys will uh, tell us. Okay, and third important thing that you have to just uh, uh, remember here is the secondary data analyzed in the quality score. What is the secondary data that is analyzed in a very quality score? 
there are different ways by which you, know, you can just analyze the data. There are different ways. Uh, one of the ways for analyzing the data is the qualitative method. So what are the different types of, uh, one of the qualitative method of analyzing the data is uh, called as text analysis, wherein, uh, wherein uh, the words written by the customers are analyzed. So this is one of the ways by which you know you are trying to explore. Let's suppose you take an example of, uh, let's suppose you are, Let's suppose, you know, you take an example of Airbnb. You know, you already know that, some of you might know that Airbnb is a company which gives you an aggregator for rental services. Suppose, say, for example, I want to stay somewhere. I have a lot of options on Airbnb. What are those options? You can stay in a backpacker. You can stay in a lodge. You can stay in a restaurant. You can stay in a uh, service apartment. You can stay with the family. I mean, uh, there are plenty of opportunities that are possible. So here, what Airbnb has done here is, you know, if you simply have an apartment, okay, and it's lying vacant, you can convert that apartment into a lodge. You can convert that. You can rent that apartment. You know, you can list that apartment on the website. You can list that apartment on the website and then, you know, as and when the customers will select it and then they will come and stay, they will pay and then uh, they will pay to Airbnb. Airbnb will retain its commission and then rest of the amount of money will be passed on to you. So literally here in Airbnb, what is happening here is uh, all your uh, uh, unused uh, houses, unused rooms, unused houses, you know, uh, you know, your second floor is empty and you might want to rent it out. Or, you know, you have about two to three bedrooms empty and you want to rent it out. You let the guest to come and stay with you. Uh, if you want to use this unused uh, property, I mean, that can be listed on Airbnb. Okay, so if you just list it on Airbnb and, you know, the customers will, I mean, what is happening here? Uh, we'll talk about secondary data analyzed uh, in a very qualitative manner. So in this case, what happens, you know, after the customer, you know, clicks in and then, you know, they go and stay there, then uh, they they pay the money and they come out and then they usually write the reviews. So now, uh, as a marketing research, you can analyze those reviews. You can, you know, they will be written five stars, six stars, and then about three to four sentences they would have written about each property. Now, use those each property's wordings, reviews, and then try to explore. Those what well, those are the words that are written on the website of the Airbnb by these customers. Try to explore that. You try to explore and then find out. You probably will find out. Uh, you probably will find out what are the uh, uh, what are the what people actually expect from the room services. I mean, uh, how they would write a lot of things about how it was good, how it was not so good, and where are the which are the areas which you can improve. All those things can be recorded there. All right. So that is how uh, you can do export research uh, using secondary data. You know, secondary data could be related to like, you know, even um, sales report also. You know, how the sales has been performing, how the sales has been done uh, over the period of time. So um, all that information can be collated and um, can be collated and can be analyzed in a very qualitative Okay, so um, literature review, uh, secondary data can be analyzed in uh, a lot of different ways, a lot of different ways. Uh, this is the uh, company's secondary data can be analyzed, a website secondary data can be analyzed, sales report can be analyzed, finance data can be analyzed. Uh, these are the methods for uh, export research. Qualitative research. As I just mentioned, I mean, quality of research is all about exploring uh, a different uh, something which is not being measured. You are trying to uh, measure the feelings. You are uh, you are trying to uh, you know there is something called as uh, ease of doing business. How can you measure ease of doing business? Can we quantify this? It's not very easy. Uh, uh, now, ease of business 
but then you know you can you can always quantify this uh, by converting by asking questions to the customer and converting each of these questions into measurable units and then out of those units out of those units you know you calculate one number or number one index so that's how you know sentimental index uh, sentiment analysis is done in case of uh, text analysis where uh, each and every property that is being belonging to airbnb uh, there they will give a sentimental index for each and every property so if the sentiment index is very high then you know uh, a more chances that you know that property is uh, liked by maximum number of people so that's how it goes so um, that is one of the ways by which so these are surveys of experts uh, number 2 is forex surveys number 3 secondary data analyzed in a qualitative way and even the qualitative research so these are some of the methods by which you can do uh, exploratory research okay now uh so all these are written here so now uh, now let us try to understand analyze in a qualitative way secondary data are the data that have already been collected for purpose other than the problem at hand okay and now the data can be located quickly and inexpensively it is a rapid easy way of collecting data now secondary data can help in you know i am talking about something called as uh, how qualitative research can be done using secondary data so some of the advantages are it can identify the problem better define the problem it can develop an approach to the problem and apart from that it can develop it can formulate and uh, appropriate research design answer certain research questions test some of the hypothesis interpret primary data more significantly okay and inside fully okay so this is what it is our methods of exploratory uh, research now let us try to understand methods of explore collection of secondary data okay there are two types of data secondary data that we have first one is internal and second one is external data now in internal internal data now there are again two types of internal data that we have so first one is ready to use data and second one is require further processing internal data let's uh, let's try to understand what is this uh, ready to use data and requires further processing uh internal data so what is the internal data uh, for example what you have achieved the sales for next let's suppose uh, last 3 months that is ready to use data uh data that you have i mean amount of money that you have spent for advertising for last 3 months that is ready to be used uh, data uh number of people that you have hired you know that is ready to be used data number of people who have left versus those who have hired them in that is ready to be used data the payment that you make to the employees that is ready to be used data so these are the some of the data which are already in use i mean you can use them now there is certain kind of a data which requires further processing you need to refine that little bit so that you know you can make sense out of it you can understand that data much better now let's suppose uh let's take an example of uh the kind of data which requires further processing now what happens you know if you want to calculate the iteration rate now iteration rate attrition rate attrition rate among the employees is not readily available one has to calculate that attrition level percentage for every quarter now within those 3 months every organization takes how many people have joined to the organization within that period of time and within that period of time how many people have left so now you work out the percentage of this like suppose you know out of uh, 50 people have joined and 25 people have left so you have attrition level of 50% so this is what is uh, for requires further processing you know uh, this kind of data requires further so say for example you want to find out the customer lifetime value 
now customer lifetime value you cannot just uh, you look at the sales you cannot understand what is uh, customer lifetime value what is customer lifetime value customer lifetime value is nothing but it's a value it's the amount of money that is spent by the customer throughout his association with that company for example i have been associated with airtel since last 5 years so how much money that i have spent with airtel uh, that is apart from that how much money possibly i might also spend in future as well so that is what is average uh, customer lifetime value now how can i calculate customer lifetime value uh, you know by doing like it requires little further processing. how much money that you spend for marketing margins that you earn okay from that customer that is first minus how much you spend for marketing okay so that you minus it and apart from that there is something called as a retention a rate a retention rate so you go on deducting retention percentage every year so retention percentage would be like 80% 75% so you will have to multiply you will have to multiply uh this is a multiplier that you need to use uh, for multiplying that retention okay so that is one aspect of it and then you go further then you you apart from this retention percentage you will also find out uh certain other things uh certain other things like uh, you know the uh, depreciation rate that one so you know, all these things figure out i mean you need to calculate and Uh, for a particular month and then uh, this is what is uh, further processing means you know this is not very, you have all the other data that is there for calculating customer lifetime value uh, you have marketing you have variable cost you have retention spending you have depreciation um, all these you need to calculate to come up with uh, customer lifetime value so these are the two different types of uh, secondary data that we have so ready to use and requires further processing so now let's move on to external data so there are three different types of external data that we have here so one is the published material second one is the computerized database and third one is syndicated services okay so what first first thing is uh, we will try to understand what is published uh, material published material is something you know which is been published online online database that we have i mean how many uh, uh the research papers that have been published already about doing sales you know that could be a published material a published material it could be uh, related to an uh, impact of lockdown on the gdp uh, some kind of a published material which could be related to your uh, research suppose say for example i want to do a research on the performance of sales during lockdown so Uh, for that research you need to refer to already existing paper which studies about the impact of lockdown on uh, consumption so that is what is uh, published material let's suppose you know you are doing a, you are a scientist and you are doing a research on finding out the vaccine for coronavirus and then you do refer to published articles you do refer to different uh, research papers which have been already done in this regard so that is what is external resource let's suppose you know you want to do uh, you know you want to launch uh, some kind of model okay so you want to launch a new school let's suppose you know you want to do a you launch a new school and you don't know how to do that okay so you know you have started the school for the first time and i don't know how how do i launch the school you have built the school but how do i advertise the school we don't know that so in order to understand how to do advertisement for the schools uh, we might simply not do whatever the other schools are doing so you might uh, you know you do go through the website and then you learn already written literature how education has to be uh, marketed uh, what are the best platforms to do uh, education marketing so you study that that is what is uh, published material you refer to you know 
suppose you are doing something for the first time and you don't know head and tail about it. I mean, what you do, you do go through published materials. That. You know, even published video is all that. Let's suppose, you know, you want to do a repair. Okay? So you want to repair a car and you don't know how to repair it. And what do you do? You go on to YouTube and try to understand. So here, that's a published material. It is already there on the YouTube. So it's published and you, you know, if you want to do something new, basically what you do? You go and refer to the published material. You want to launch a new product. You don't know how much has to be spent on each of these uh, different products for marketing. So, if say, for example, a big company is want, wanting to do a marketing of a phone, and they don't know how much they have to spend on different verticals. Let's suppose they don't know how how much money that has to be spent. Uh, let's suppose they have a marketing budget of hundred dollars. Now, out of this hundred dollars, how much should I spend on newspaper? How much should I spend on you know? Uh, social media, how much I should spend on, uh, let's suppose, uh, TV, uh, TV media. What should be the split of this 100 rupees? Now, how do I find that? Out? I mean, obviously, you know, you, you go by gut feeling, that is well and good. You know, out of 100 rupees, I spend 50 rupees for uh, social media, 25 for say, newspaper, another 25 for, I mean, this is just a uh, gut feeling. That, you know, has anybody has done you? There is some uh, business colleges who have done research. On what is the best pricing split that you can do? If you want to sell uh, phones in India, what should be the proper, correct method of splitting your expenditure? Okay, should I spend only 20% on my social media and rest of the 80% on uh, uh, the newspaper as well as you know? television or should it be like the other way around so newspaper and the television should comprise about 80 percent and 20 percent should be spent on social media like like suppose you know you are doing a marketing like suppose you are doing a marketing and marketing a phone and the media mix expenditure in the north india especially in places like jharkhand bihar orissa you know where uh, there is no I mean, you can, you need to spend more on these different media, like broadcast media, like newspaper and uh, uh, television, rather than social media. But you know, when you go abroad, when you are doing a marketing, in, suppose like say Poland, or you are doing a marketing, let's like, suppose in US, then the majority of your money should be spent on social media and very less on print media. So this is what is published material. It is already there, published in a social domain. So whatever that is there already. Uh, that you are referring it to. So that is what is called as published material. Okay, so we will go on to the next one is like computerized database. There are certain databases which hold a lot of research papers. For example, one database that we have, we know it as, as a Scopus. Scopus is uh, owned by uh, Clarivate Analysis. Clarivate Analytics, and uh, this company holds a lot of papers that are being published. So what usually happens here in this case is usually whoever does publication, whoever does publication, uh, they submit that paper to some of these journals. Now the journals, these journals are associated with some kind of a database, some databases. There are some journals which are very independent and which are not related to a database, but there are some other journals which are listed in the databases of a reputed company. So Scopus is also one database which holds all the journals which are very reputed in nature. All the reputed journals are listed in Scopus and Science Citation Index, the CR, or Emerging Science Citation Index, ESCR or web of science. You know, these are the places, these are the uh, databases uh, where, these are the databases where the journals are listed. These are the databases where the journals are listed. Now, now what do you do? Now what do you do? Uh, you can always, you know, EBSCOP is another uh, database that we have. JGate is another database that we have. Uh, Francis and Taylor is another database that we have. Health is another database that we have. They all, all these are uh, 
they operate on subscription basis you know they sell research papers based on a uh, subscription let's suppose you know you become a member a journal of marketing um, uh, journal of marketing uh, you know listed in scopus and uh, you can become a member by paying uh, $50 per annum and then you know they will keep sending you 12 different issues of the uh, journals for one year now within this uh, each journal has about 12 to 15 research papers and you know there are different there they will be doing different things in that research papers you know some would have written something about branding some would have written something about customer lifetime value some would have written something about uh, relationship marketing some would have written something about how existing sub customers are more profitable than uh, going after for new customers you know why it is so you know they have done a small research on this and they have proved that uh, concentrating on existing customers is 33% more profitable than going after the new customers okay so you know for going after new customers you need to spend on marketing you need to spend on advertisement you need to come up with uh, you know extra dealers extra retailers uh, you know you need to push your product uh, into the market and you need to spend money for that so instead of doing that if you concentrate on 100 people the existing customer let's imagine that we have about 100 people and we are earning about 1000 rupees every month from those 100 people so instead of investing in more 100 rupees into market 100 rupees you concentrate more on these 100 people instead of focusing more on acquiring new another 100 set another 50 75 another 10 more every month instead of that you concentrate more on these 100 Okay. so if you concentrate more on these 100 people then you know these people will be definitely satisfied then you can save on marketing expense you don't have to spend on uh, money for advertising you don't have to spend for uh, you know going for new distributor or new channel of distribution or new retailer we don't have to struggle so much or you don't have to push for advertisement slots in the television we don't have to do all that stuff. we don't have to in a nutshell we don't have to spend money so if we focus more on these 100 people that should be enough these 100 people will do marketing for you provided if they are very satisfied with your company okay so these people you know you are coming up with very high attention you are paying lot of attention to these 100 people and then you know these 100 people will get 10 more people uh, next month those 10 more people will add on to 10 more people so over the period of time your advertisement expenditure will be null absolutely zero there will be no advertisement expenditure at all in the company so that is what it happens that's what happens uh, with respect to um, uh, research so now how this is what is known as word of mouth advertising wherein you know you do advertisement without spending money now how can i do that word of mouth advertisement using websites so what are the different ways of uh, treating the customers properly so what wow, that's why it has been uh, said that crm is on the right and the advertisement is on the fall i mean you don't believe much in the advertisement but then there is a lot of hype about customer relationship management only because existing focusing on existing customers is always profitable so therefore so therefore uh, you can save on lot of expenditure by focusing more on the existing customers and that's the beauty of crm all right so uh, that's what computerized databases uh, help uh, syndicated services uh, let's try to understand what is syndicated services what are written here syndicated services are referred to those companies that collect and sell common pool of data of known commercial value designed to service information needs shared by a number of clients using these services is frequently less expensive than collecting primary data what does that mean well syndicated services are nothing but these are the listed companies and these 
or the uh, companies which collect data about the customer. College collect a lot of database about the customers and they try to sell this database to some other company. Okay, so, so let's suppose there is an internet based company and this internet based company wants to sell, uh, uh, it, it has acquired, it has acquired the data related to 10 lakhs uh, Indians, all their uh, Aadhaar numbers. So if they have Aadhaar numbers, you know, they have date of birth, they have address, everything is current, you know, this is what is the database. Now this database can be sold to some other company. I mean, there is, there are two faces to this business. One is what data that we can sell, what is the data which we cannot sell. And whenever you are selling some kind of a data, uh, is it how ethical it is? By mean, uh, you know, you can determine, uh, you can determine what is ethical and what is not ethical. So does the customer know that you are selling their information? If it is yes, knowingly with their permission you are trying to sell their information, then yes, it sounds very ethical. Otherwise, it's not so ethical. Let's suppose uh, some of the apps, they try to collect a lot of information about the uh, users. How much, you know, where you roam around, you know, what sort of websites that you, you know, what they do. Whenever before app is been implemented, app is been installed on your PC or app is been installed on your, on your uh, phones, they do ask for the permission. Okay. They do ask for the permission related to your location, they do for like sharing photos, they would like to ask uh, permission for, you know, a uh, lot of other things like, you know, your location, your photos and your uh, uh, operating system that you are using, the kind of phone that you are using. So what do you think they will do with this data? So they obviously, uh, in case if the companies go bankrupt or if the company wants to liquidate its own assets, then they probably would sell this database. So they take your permission before downloading their app. So all these things are there in syndicated services. So syndicated services are, let's suppose, you know, these are uh, the companies which collect data and sell data, okay? They collect data related to GDPs of different countries and they sell the data to the companies, different companies. And so the different companies can make sense out of that data. Some of these uh, syndicated services, they collect data related to uh, inflation. Uh, what is the current inflation? Of course, the government bodies also do have uh, certain mechanisms wherein they can calculate the inflation rates and etc. and etc. But then, uh, we don't know. What is the wholesale price index? How do you calculate that? Uh, that is collected by these syndicated companies. So customer spending index, that is collected by these industries and things like that. Okay, so, uh, so, yes. Okay, so these are uh, the uh, uh, different classifications of secondary data. Okay, now let's move on to qualitative research. What are the methods for exploratory research? What are the different methods that we have for exploratory research? Uh, the first one that we discussed was the qualitative research that is uh, unstructured, exploratory, uh, niche based on a small sample intended to provide insight and understanding for the problem setting. And, uh, and uh, it is classified into two types, direct and indirect approaches. And direct approach, one type of qualitative research in which the proposed uh, of the project are disclosed to the respondent or obvious given the nature of interview. Uh, indirect approach, a type of qualitative research in which uh, the proposals of the project are disguised from the respondents. Okay, the, what are the different methods of exploratory research? I mean, there are two different types of exploratory research that we can talk about. The first one is the direct approach and the second one is indirect approach. So, 
so what are the uh, direct approach? Excuse me. Ah, hello, madam. Huh? Download our file. As uh, one simple province, sir, can you tell me? Under our own node, sir, we can. Huh? Our current is username, password. Is our own research head? Can you tell me? And when I am in there. और नन को इंटरनेट मत रिसर्च से प्रवीण सर हेल्प हाँ हाँ अंदर ना क्लास नी हाँ नोड़ते नोड़ नन मत मन नम मन हो मत बंद मत क्लास एर मत मूर नाक नन मत एक्सामेशन ड्यूटी स्क्रूटी क हाँ हाँ ना बर्ती तो ये टाइम सब बर्ती हाँ ओके 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 सो व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट मेथड्स ऑफ एक्सप्लोर्ड रिसर्च सो क्वालिटेटिव रिसर्च Uh, so there are two different types of research that we have. One is direct approach, and another one is indirect approach. So direct approach is all about the focus groups and uh, depth interviews, uh, wherein you know you are trying to contact the customers directly, and the depth interviews are all about uh, you are trying to uh, get into the customers. Uh, you are doing a, a deep interview. So focus group is like. a uh, group of people are sit together and they discuss and during that discuss lot of new ideas they emerge let's suppose you know they uh, they give out they give uh, product design and then you know they try to they show the product design to the people and then they will ask them to discuss about this you know group of outwise you know mixer grinder they will give it to them and then you know they will ask them to use it about 10 15 and then they will make them to sit in a room and then they will make them to speak about what are the design changes that we can do so that you know that is what is focus group this depth depth interview is all about deep interviews one to one interviews okay indirect approach is projective techniques and association completion techniques construction techniques expressive techniques these are the different techniques that we will discuss later on okay thank you